Papa All Might continues to look after Baby Deku, the first user of One For All's name gets revealed, and we finally get introduced to the second and third user. Let's talk about all of this and more as we dive right into the newest chapter of My Hero Academia. So My Hero Academia Chapter 310 is finally out. And with it, we get a nice little look into the current state of the My Hero world, as well as more shots of Midoriya looking cool as all hell. Oh, and to introduce a giant innocent fox lady who the furry community are going to have an absolute field day with. Tall, beautiful, busty, and innocent, dear Lord Horikoshi, what have you done? In this chapter, we see Midoriya deal with some vigilantes, a smile that could cure a thousand diseases, and we finally get to see who exactly the second and third user of One For All are, and a bit of their origins. But before I begin talking about this chapter, I'm first going to go into a quick summary of what happened last time. And as usual, don't forget to Detroit smash that like button and slide into that subscribe button's DMs to hit that notification bell. In the last chapter, we got to see the conclusion of Midoriya and Shindo's fight with the beefy villain Muscular. The chapter opened up with Midoriya being spotted delivering the defeated Muscular over to the police, and Shindo being escorted by the building refugees to the nearest hospital. As Shinzo is being trolleyed away, he reflects on how the person who saved him looked exactly like our baby Midoriya, but something seemed different. And I gotta say, of course he does, Shindo. He's gone from innocent naive, I'll bring your daughter home by eight, to your dad calls me daddy too. After Midoriya hides his identity and drops off muscular to the authorities, he meets up with the best hero dad in the business, All Might. Here, it's revealed that Midoriya is actually using a support item from America called Mid Gauntlet, which helps prevent his body from ripping itself apart while using high percentages of one for all. Melissa Shield, you're saving Midoriya once again. Note, it hasn't been confirmed Melissa Shield made a support item, I just thought it would be a nice nod to her character. Please don't comment hate at me below. After a brief conversation, All Might receives a call from the smooth talking bird boy himself, Hawks, who tells All Might the best course of action is to keep hunting down the League and to support Midoriya in his endeavors any way he can. It then cuts to a flashback where Dr. Mario diagnoses Midoriya with you're gonna be A-OK -okay because you're the protagonist disease and Ligma. After Dr. Jumpman leaves, All Might tells Mama Inko Midoriya the truth about One For All, and Deku says he's leaving UA. Not wanting her poor baby boy to get hurt anymore, Inko begs Izuku to stay, to which he heartbreakingly tells her that he has to go, but that he will be back. For the love of God, give this woman a break! We then get to see a quick interaction between Midoriya and Gran Torino, who tells Midoriya not to be afraid to kill Shigaraki, as he hands over his iconic yellow cape. And the chapter ends with a superhero shot of Team Chicken Hot Pants, Izuku and All Might teaming up in the hopes to take down the League. And this is where chapter 310 picks up. This chapter opens up on a dark rainy night, as a group of civilians are charging towards a giant silhouetted monster. However, it's quickly revealed that the person they are attacking is no monster, and is in fact a poor innocent bystander who just so happens to be the wielder of a mutation based quirk, giving her a fox like appearance. As the innocent woman pleads her innocence to the other civilians, they refuse to listen to her, believing she is a criminal just trying to deceive them. Taking just justice into their own hands, one of the men charging the woman opens fire on her with his arm cannon. But luckily just before the projectile can hit its target, our main man and star of the show Midoriya, who is still looking as badass as ever, arrives onto the scene intercepting the projectile and confronts the attackers. Midoriya tells the attackers to calm down, that he understands it's a rainy night and tensions are high, but the person they are attacking means no harm. Hearing this and seeing the terrifying image that is Midoriya, the group run off, but not before they exclaim, if she is so innocent, she should stop acting so suspicious. Now there are a few things I really like about this moment. Firstly, the woman who was being attacked was completely innocent, but due to the darkness and her seemingly threatening visage, the group of men assumed that she must be a threat, and began their assault before they could be attacked first. This shows not only the current extremely high tensions of a world without heroes, but it also shows just how dangerous vigilantism can be. Without the restrictions and regulations associated with hero society, there is nothing stopping people from enforcing their own image of justice. The group of men who attacked this woman weren't evil, they were just scared and afraid and were doing what they thought was right. The other thing that I really liked about this whole scenario is that we actually get to see that Midoriya isn't just dealing with criminals. The people of the world are also attacking each other. This adds an 
entirely new dynamic which we've never seen in the main series before. Suddenly, a situation which could easily be handled by flying in and beating up the bad guy is far more complicated, as sometimes there is really no good or bad, just misunderstandings and a lack of clear communication and reassurance. This is a very cool thing to add in the series, and I'd love to see a scene where Midoriya or someone else has to try and decide if the person making the threats is actually a villain or just a disorientated civilian. Plus, the whole there is no real bad guy in this fight, you just have to talk it out to fix the problem situation really reminds me of My Hero Academia Vigilantes, which I love to see. But anyway, after Midoriya saves the foxy lady, she informs our protagonist that she is making her way to the evacuation zone. She tells Midoriya that the town they are in was one of the safer places in the beginning, so she thought it would be best to stay put. However, over time, more and more casualties began to emerge. She then apologizes to Midoriya for causing a mess, and we get this cute little shot of Midoriya floating up holding an umbrella over her head. Aw, there's the classic softy Izuku we all know and love. After listening to what she has to say, Midoriya then leaves the woman with some parting words. Don't worry, things will return to normal. And right as Midoriya is about to leave, who pulls up on cue? None other than All Might in his fancy ass All Might mobile. First we get the Denimobile, now we get the All Might mobile? God damn, these heroes really do got style. All Might informs the woman that he will ensure that she reaches her destination safely, and he gives Midoriya a packed lunch. To which Midoriya responds by giving us the most wholesome smile you have ever seen. God, he's so adorable. Plus, I love the way he looks just like Happy All Might. And you're telling me Midoriya isn't All Might's secret love child. I think Shoto was onto something. After this, it then cuts to Midoriya standing on top of a building, staring off in the distance while he is having a conversation with One For All's fifth user, Banjo Daijiro. Banjo talks to Midoriya about how it feels like they've gone back in time to the dark ages of quirks with vigilantes and criminals running rampant and heroes having no time to rest. He also mentions how they still have no leads on the location of any of the League members and how none of the prison escapees have any idea where they're being held up either. Midoriya responds by saying that if Shigaraki reaches his full power, he doubts that even Endeavor and Aizawa working together could stop him, and that if they want this chaos to end, one for all will have to stop him ASAP. And with this, we get a flashback to Midoriya's conversation with the council of one for all users. It cuts back to the very last scene we saw of this conversation, with the first user turning to the second and third user asking them for help. It's interesting to note that this time, the first user says, we need to work together, please, my heroes. But even with this addition, what we are left with is an uneasy silence as everyone has eyes on the two users facing the wall. This silence is broken, however, by Banjo, who shouts at Midoriya, telling him he better get used to all of the new quirks ASAP. And with this, the topic changes and all of the users begin to talk amongst themselves. But just when the first user is about to give up and turn around, the third user begins to speak. And we get our first ever look at the third user's face. Behold, take it in in all of its beautiful glory. The third user goes on to say that they came from the harshest era of history. The era where all for one was in his peak and reigned supreme. He carries on saying that everyone was terrified of all for one, and it took the combined power of countless people to prevent him from taking control of everything. And as all of this is being said, we get our first ever look at the second user as well, who looks like this. Now I gotta say it, he really does look a lot like Bakugo, with the exception of the scar running across his face. Could it be possible that he's actually one of Bakugo's ancestors? I mean, he does have a gauntlet with a gun on it as well. Let me know what you guys think below. After the third user finishes up talking about All For One's reign, the second user chimes in saying, Yoichi already knew all of this, right? To which the first user responds, yes. That's right, the first user's name has finally been revealed as Yoichi, making his full name Yoichi Shigaraki. 
Big reveals in this chapter. The second user follows up this name drop by saying that they have already lost too many people to all for one. And he asks Yuichi, does he really believe they will willingly put their fate into a bright-eyed teenager who wants to save his arch nemesis? Which, when you think about it, is a pretty fair point, as it is coming from someone who lived in a time where they probably had to fight and kill just to survive. And surprisingly, the first user actually agrees, saying it is most certainly delusional. However, he adds on, just as delusional as a certain pair saving their arch nemesis. As the first user says this, we see the second and third user breaking down the door to the holding cell in which All For One held his younger brother all those years ago. And in seeing the weak defenseless Yoichi in his cell, the second user reached out his hand to help him. Now there is a lot to break down from this scene. Firstly, there is the amazing transition of the door in the room where the vestiges are all talking being the same door the first user was locked behind in his cell. This means that the room where all of the one for all users are meeting is actually a copy of the first user's prison cell. Secondly, we have the phrasing of the first user. He calls himself the second and third user's nemesis. Now more than likely, this just refers to the fact that he is all for one's brother. So at the time, he was probably considered a threat just like his evil brother. Or it could be that the second and third user weren't exactly the good guys. Maybe they were working with another gang or an enemy of all for once, which would make Yoichi, a person who believes in heroes and justice, their enemy. Thirdly, there's the fact that the second user doesn't have a scar on his face in the flashback of him saving Yoichi, which suggests that he received that scar at a later point, possibly during his defeat at the hands of all for one. And lastly, we have the insane parallels of the second user holding out his hand to help Yoichi. This shot is identical to not only the image we saw just a few chapters ago of a young Midoriya holding out his hand to a young Tenko Shimura, but it is also identical to Midoriya holding out his hand to a young Bakugo. And the significance of this is actually explained by the first user, as after it shows this image, he explains that the entire journey and fight against All For One all started Started because the second user reached out his hand all those years ago. The first user tells the second that he believes in Midoriya, because while one for all will never bend to all for one, it was only because a person was willing to extend their hand out to help another that this power was created in the first place. Now I really like this little moment, because it shows the true power behind a simple act of kindness. When the second user reached out his hand to the first, he didn't know that the first user had a power, let alone that it was a power which would eventually take down the greatest villain to ever live. He just saw someone in need and through one simple action, he ended up changing the fate of the entire world. And it wasn't something extravagant like defeating a rampaging villain or saving the lives of millions of people. It was an action that even the most powerless person could perform. A basic helping hand to a person in need. It's honestly a beautiful message and it's a message that has been been there throughout the entire series. But after this, the chapter does come to an end as it cuts back to Midoriya in the present being told by the one for all users that from here on out, all of them will be giving it their all. And we get this gorgeous shot of Midoriya facing forward with all of the previous one for all users, faces included with the exception of All Might of course, standing behind him. Actually I lied, the last shot of this chapter is Midoriya eating the lunch Papa All Might gave him. Overall, it was a really enjoyable chapter. Finally, we got to see the second and third user's faces, but not only that, we also learned the first user's name, which I was definitely not expecting. Seeing Midoriya not beating up people and sorting out a conflict through talking was a nice change of pace. And of course, Dad Might is always great. I really like what they did with the second user, especially with him being the one to reach out a hand to the first user rather than vice versa. Although I will say I am dying to learn more about the second and third user in general. Their story seems really interesting and I would kill to see their adventures in the all for one rules dark ages. But let me know what you think of this chapter. If you like this video, don't forget to leave a like and comment what you think is going to happen next. For more My Hero content, subscribe to the Lunchtime Crew. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Plus Ultra.